Hi! In this video demonstration, we're going to tackle kind of a, a rather complex uh, particle system using particle flow to create uh, realistic rain. Uh, and when I say rain, I don't just mean some drops falling from the sky and hitting the ground. I mean, it's gonna, we're going to hit uh, several objects and, and create some uh, methods and ways for it to drip around or down certain objects and splashes and, and all kinds of stuff. This is a rather complex system, uh, but it's one that uh, I do believe that every 3D uh, particle artist should probably uh, attempt. Uh, especially if they uh, plan on really truly getting to know all the ins and outs of uh, particle flow. So here we are, we'll start with a brand new scene. And we're going to need to create uh, at least a few simple things. We don't need to create a whole scene uh, worth of uh, graphics and elements. Uh, but what we are going to create here is uh, something along the lines of this. Minus the textures and the actual geometry, save maybe for the sphere in the ground. Uh, but we'll get some drips and some uh, drops and splashes, and we'll have a, a fun time creating a complex system here. So, let me get rid of this uh, bar down here to give us more room to see this stuff. And uh, we'll go ahead and start to create uh, some objects. Now, you can create your ground and, uh, and any other objects you want to splash off of uh, a little bit later. Uh, but for right now, we're going to just create uh, uh, a couple of things like uh, a sphere uh, for some raindrops to fall along. This could be any geometry in the future that you uh, really like. Uh, and uh, a ground plane, which we'll just use a, a regular deflector. So, create tab, geometry. Let's go ahead and make ourselves a sphere first off. I'm just going to kind of click and drag one out here. And uh, go to the Modify tab, and let's make it maybe a radius of 20. And we'll raise it up off the ground a little bit, maybe. You know, we'll, we'll center it, and we'll get it hovering up there, maybe 65 units off the, off the grid. Just a little ways off the grid. It doesn't really matter how far. The next thing we want to create, go to our Create tab here again, and come over to our Space Warps. Uh, we're going to need a few things. Let's start with, uh, not the forces, but the drop down for deflectors. We're going to need a deflector, uh, and that's going to kind of take the place of our ground. You can add uh, an actual physical model or object for your ground uh, a little later. Uh, let's go with, uh, let's say, I don't know, just 250 over 250, and we'll center it. Uh, around our, our sphere, so that'll be where our rain is going to end up falling. This can be a little bit bigger, depending on how big of a rain system you really want to have, uh, etc. Let's go back to our Create tab. Let's create a couple more things I know we're going to need. Uh, let's go with, uh, while we're still in deflectors, let's create a U deflector. I'm just going to click and drag out an icon somewhere in my scene. We'll come back to the settings later. And then let's go to the forces. The forces, we're going to need a gravity. So I'll click and drag in my top view to create the gravity pointing down. And we're going to need a wind for some turbulence. I'm going to click and drag that kind of in the center of my scene, just underneath my sphere, again in the top view, so the wind is pointing up. We're not going to have any strength to this wind. It's just going to give us a little bit of turbulence uh, so that our drops can uh, do something other than just go straight down, maybe give them a little character. Uh, I get a little crazy, so I like to come down here and right-click on the uh, spinners down here to center uh, a lot of this stuff. Uh, and then maybe we can do some uh, some settings changes here. For our wind, let's go over here, and uh, we want to make sure that the strength is at zero. We don't want any wind because it'll be pushing and pulling. You can add a wind that's got a little bit of strength, maybe going side to side, and your rain will fall a little bit uh, uh, different rather than straight down. Uh, let's give it some turbulence. Let's do something small, just a little bit of turbulence. We don't want it to go crazy. Uh, maybe a frequency of 2 and a scale of 0.15. If you want a little bit more, uh, you know, you can play around with these numbers and just see what the, especially the drips are going to be doing on your sphere here as they kind of come down the side uh, later on. And then you can come back and adjust this uh, all you like there. Uh, for our gravity, we don't need much. Uh, I just want to get these raindrops to start falling, so I'm going to go with a 0.1, just something very small. Uh, everything else can remain uh, as is. For our deflector, the first deflector we have there, this, this guy for the ground, let's go with a bounce of not quite that high. Maybe we'll go with 0.35. 
uh, we can give it a variation of 45% so that some splashes and some bounces are higher and some are lower and that gives us just a little bit more of a natural chaotic uh, feel. Speaking of chaos, we can give uh, quite a bit to it so that uh, our bouncing can go in all sorts of directions. Uh, we'll go with an 80% chaos, uh, maybe 35% friction just to keep them in place and not gliding on a uh, super slick oiled up surface. Uh, that should do us pretty good. Uh, we can also go ahead and set up our U deflector here. We're going to pick the object, which is going to be our sphere. And that way any drops that hit our sphere is going to kind of come down uh, and go around the side here and, and, and it'll use the sphere's geometry as the actual deflector. That's what's nice about these U deflectors. Uh, the bounce, let's go with a little bit higher on this one, maybe a 0.5, 25% uh, variation. All of these values are, you're welcome to play with uh, and get a little bit different look uh, out of your rain system if you like. Uh, we'll go with maybe only 35% chaos, and I want this to have quite a bit of friction so that uh, the raindrops kind of stay in place and don't look like they're kind of uh, super lubricated, sliding everywhere. That ought to do pretty good for us. Uh, and I think now uh, we are probably ready to go ahead and create our particle system. Uh, in order to do this, this might be easier if we just go to our Create tab here, back to our Geometry button. Uh, and in the drop down, let's go to particle systems. Most of the time, you might just see me uh, hit the six on the keyboard to open up particle flow here. Uh, and I'll just start building one in here. But when I actually need an icon of a specific size, uh, some of the times I'll just kind of come straight to the particle systems. And then maybe in my top view, I'll drag out a particle flow icon uh, that's going to be the size uh, that I really truly need it. Uh, maybe we'll we'll take this icon, we'll move it up, I don't know, 175 so that the rain starts from above. Uh, and just for good measure, I'll kind of center it. I can go to my Modify tab and do a little bit of adjustment. Let's uh, let's keep it a little smaller than our uh, than our icon for the for the deflector, so we don't get rain missing it and, and such like that. I also want to make sure that the viewport is at 100%. We can do that inside particle flow. Uh, window as well. Uh, maybe even we'll go a little less. We'll go 225 and 225, so that so that we've got plenty of room for the last raindrop that comes out of this uh, particle system to splash and everything. Nothing's falling off the edge here. We can uh, adjust by making this a little bit bigger in the future too, or making the particles a little smaller. We can always come back and do this stuff. Uh, if I go ahead and hit 6 now, it should open Particle View. Uh, remember that if it does not, you have to have this button up here, uh, up at the top ribbon here, turned on, toggled on, for the keyboard, keyboard shortcut override. Uh, once that is uh, depressed, hitting 6 on your keyboard should open up Particle Flow. Here's our standard uh, source that we have to work with. Remember, if you click up on the title bar for the PF source, you get a lot of that same information that we were just working with uh, in the modify panel uh, over here. Uh, the viewport percentage is all right there, etc. I'm going to add maybe four zeros in here just, uh, just for an added step of protection so that we can see all of our particles that are going to kind of happen here. Uh, okay, you can reduce the, the logo size if you want and, the, and just to get things out of your way so we can see that stuff a little bit better. That should do us pretty good. Uh, we are going to need a berth. We are going to need a position icon. We will not need a speed, so I'm going to select that one. Hold down Control, select the rotation. We won't need that one. Uh, and we can right click and just delete those guys. Now, I want the way particle flow works is anything that happens in this very first event box, our PF source box, will get carried down throughout the rest of the system. Uh, so if I want the, the drops themselves to have the same shape all the way through, I can actually click and drag this from that first event into our PF source event and do some of my uh, initial changes there. I can even do it with the display here so that I don't have to worry about those displays in all of my other events. They'll all have the same uh, thing there. Uh, I'm not going. I would do this uh, on my own probably as I'm working, but just in order to illustrate some of the things that we're going to create in this uh, rather complicated uh, setup, I'm going to undo and leave the displays there so we get something different in each one of these, and we can actually see what's going on. For the shape, 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mark it as a 20-sided sphere, uh, something lower polygon but still round because our raindrops uh, will want a rounder shape to them. Uh, and then I'm going to reduce the size, uh, maybe 0.75, something a little smaller. Uh, again, adjust this value uh, in the future if you want your raindrops bigger or smaller or any of that. We're going to kind of make kind of a cartoony, overemphasized, exaggerated rain here today. So that should give us a, a small but uh, still good to start raindrop. Then we can come down here into our first event. We're going to have a lot of events in this one. Rain is kind of a complicated system. So I'm going to select that title box so that it turns white. Right click and rename it. We're going to call this uh, rain creation uh, event maybe or something a little bit more descriptive so that uh, we don't get confused with all the boxes we are going to show uh, on our particle flow. In the birth here, uh, we want, uh, let's see, we've got currently 100 frames. That's not going to be enough. So before I do too much, I want to come down to my time configuration button down here. And I want to change this uh, to give us maybe 500 frames for the end time instead of 100. And that'll give us a nice long uh, rain flow, plenty of, plenty of space to work with. Once I've done that, I come back to the birth. I want my rain to start at zero, and I want it to stop all the way at the end there at 500. Uh, the amount, uh, let's go with, uh, let's just add about 2,000 uh, to get going. You can always adjust this for more or less depending on A, what your computer can handle, uh, B, how much raindrops you need, you want a really wet rain or a, kind of a light drizzle, uh, etc. And that'll be your place to start. These are the initial creation of the raindrops that are going to initially fall for us. The position icon. Uh, is exactly, we're using the position icon because we want the rain to fall from our particle flow icon. That's this orange one that we've created. Uh, other than that, you can choose a position object in the future if you want uh, your particles to come out of a specific object, not just the uh, icon for particle flow. It's kind of an invisible thing. We're going to go ahead and use it. We want our raindrop to appear anywhere within this uh, thing, so volume will work just fine. If you want to get your rain looking a little different than mine or anyone else's, you know, you can always hit the uniqueness seed uh, new button a couple of times and just get a, a reorganized uh, beginnings for your particles. As far as ticks, let's come down to the display here. I'm going to go ahead and change the color here to our initial one. Uh, you know, let's start with uh, kind of a light blue and we'll change that from ticks to lines. Uh, now, if I scrub back and forth down the timeline, you'll start to see all the particles are appearing between 0 and 500, but they're not doing anything yet. So that's what's going to be our next uh, task, is to start making these guys fall. In order to do that, uh, we're going to add a force. We've got a gravity in there, so let's add force from our operators list down underneath that position icon. And then I'm going to use the buy list button uh, and the selection by name dialog should pop up and uh, since we are adding it to the force it should only show your forces here we've got a wind and we've got a gravity uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add just the gravity to this one once that's added the particles will now spawn uh, or be born at the birth and then immediately uh, take hold on gravity so there's our initial rain event here uh, kinda just dripping from the sky uh, and that gives us a good solid rain flow to begin now that we've got what looks like rain to start, we've got a lot more work ahead of us in order to get it to actually act like natural drops of water. The first thing rain does is when it hits a surface, it bounces, it splashes. Uh, it splashes and it uh, splits into uh, several directions and you know we get that nice wet sloppy thing. So our next thing we're going to do is create both a spawn as well as a spawn based on hitting a surface. Uh, we're going to use a test for that down here in our operators called Collision Spawn. Click and drag it up underneath under your force here. And then uh, with a test operator, that's all these yellow ones down here, you'll see they come along with this little extra node and a dongle that you can connect to another event. Uh, we can move this to one side or the other just to kind of keep our particle flow chart here clean uh, by hovering over the little box area clicking and dragging it to the other side. Uh, I want to do that here because we're going to have two things happening in this uh, and one's going to come out this way and one's going to come out this way and it just helped me clean this thing up which is going to look a little bit chaotic and messy by the time we're done no matter what. Collision spawn. We've got to add 
our deflectors. I'm going to go ahead and buy a list, and I want to add both the U deflector and the ground deflector into this guy. Uh, because it is a spawn, uh, just a quick note, I probably should do that beforehand, you'll want to make sure that uh, your timeline slider is at zero before you really do too much, otherwise your computer could freeze up on you and crash. Uh, for those of you who are playing with your timeline slider and left it up here uh, or somewhere else in the thing, and you might end up with uh, quite a bit of spawns. Uh, you should be pretty good. Uh, it's only got set for one right now, but in the future it's always a good idea to bring that back to zero. Uh, before you add a spawn of any kind because you could end up with an infinite number of spawned particles that could just really destroy your computer and crash you uh, entirely. Speaking of crashes, now's probably a good time to uh, save our project somewhere. Uh, I'm just going to call this uh, Raindrops. Uh, I did another tutorial with Raindrops on a window uh, yesterday, so uh, this one's just going to be regular old Raindrops, and I'm going to go ahead and save just so that we've got something uh, to come back to in case our, our auto backup fails or we do crash because it's always a possibility with particle flow. All right, with our collision spawn, let's do some settings changes. Uh, we want it to spawn on the first collision, and the original particle is our parent particle. That's, uh, that's the first one falling from the sky. Uh, we can go ahead and have it delete. Once it hits the ground, it's going to break up into several other particles and create a splash. So that original can go away, and then we can have it uh, spawn however many offspring that we would like it to. I'm going to go ahead and say that this initial collision spawn, we can have uh, as many offspring as we want, maybe even up to you know, 10, depends on how wet and how splashy you really want your rain. Uh, it can go anywhere between 4 and 8 and 10 and 12. Uh, see what your computer can handle uh, as well. Uh, down here, we need to move down a little bit and talk about the speed of our newly spawned particles. Uh, default, it inherits 100% of the original particle's movement, uh, which means it's going to kind of send it right back out from our collision uh, deflector at the same speed as it came in. We don't really want that. We want it to kind of stay lower to the ground, so maybe only 20% of its original speed uh, will keep there inherited. We can also add a variation just for a little bit more of a, a natural or a chaotic look to it, uh, maybe 10% variation. And the divergence is how far, uh, if we get these particles coming straight in and then they bounce straight back up, or we're, we're in a straight line. The divergence, the higher it goes, the, the more uh, arc or away from that center line uh, our splashing particles will be allowed to go. So a divergence of 12 is awfully, uh, it's awfully low, but I think we'll just leave it there for now. We'll come back and change that if we need to. Down here, we've also got controls for a scaling of our size. Our initial particle is the full 0.75 uh, shaped sphere. Uh, the splash is going to be that particle breaking into smaller ones. So we can actually reduce that scale uh, factor a little bit, maybe by 80%. All the new drops are going to be a little smaller than the original drops. Uh, we can also give that maybe a 20% you know, variation or something along those lines so that some drops are bigger than others as it splashes. Uh, if we come down here, we'll start to see our raindrops are splitting once they hit that deflector fairly well, and they're they're turning into uh, turning into a whole range of splashes. We'll we'll sculpt that splash, make it a little bit better than just you know a barely a bounce, and then a whole bunch of them there in a moment when when our next uh, event comes along. We'll take this new blue node dongle and uh, take it out to another event. Before we do that, however, I like to uh, make sure that right now my raindrops, uh, if I actually come down here to my lines and I change that from lines to geometry, uh, right now my raindrops, find them up here, are nothing but little tiny 20-sided spheres. Not very raindrop-esque. Uh, you know, perfect spheres yeah, they probably work, but I like to add a little bit of character to mine, especially since I kind of want to make a cartoony or uh, overly exaggerated, almost stereotypical kind of a raindrop here. We're going to accomplish this uh, by spawning some new particles uh, immediately, not once they collide with something, but the whole time they're in this event, we're going to spawn these particles uh, that are going to get steadily smaller and kind of go for that raindrop shape. We're going to get a, a large one here and a small one up here, and we'll get that kind of conal raindrop shape. I'm going to do that, but again, I want to put my 
uh, timeline slider at zero before I ever add a spawn, just in case I end up creating some sort of uh, infinite loop uh, that just keeps spawning particles and then my computer can't handle all that information. I'm going to drag a regular spawn this time, which is still a test, underneath my collision spawn. I'll leave this little uh, node dongle sticking out this side. So there, we split them up and we're kind of keeping things a little bit uh, straighter, a little bit neater. I'm going to go ahead and select that spawn. We're going to do some uh, changes to the settings here. Uh, this one I want to do, instead of just once, I want it to spawn by travel distance, meaning every time it travels a certain uh, unit's length in distance, it's going to spawn a new particle. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll reduce our step size maybe to something pretty small, uh, 0.2 something along those lines. I'm not going to test it just yet. We'll come back and do this a little bit later. Uh, before I, I go too far, uh, I want to move this out into a new event because every time we leave a spawn with it connected to nothing, we run the risk of generating infinite amount of particles, which just ends up crashing our system. So if I select all these, I'm just going to kind of move them over a little bit. And I'm going to pull a delete and drop that out here. Uh, this delete I can actually rename, and I'm going to call it our initial tails uh, for our raindrops. They're going to grow the little tails that get smaller and conal shaped. And then I can immediately bring that and connect it to this. I don't want it to delete all the particles right away because otherwise, as soon as they spawn, they would get deleted. So I'm going to go to particle age. And these raindrops are falling pretty quickly, so I'm just going to go and give it a lifespan of one and be a little bold and do a variation of uh, maybe two there so that uh, some of them will have tails, some of them won't, some of them will have longer tails, some of them will have a little bit shorter tails. That'll immediately let me kill off, here's our new particles, they're the, the ones with the blue tick, let me change that color there a little bit to something brighter yellow. Our original particle is that geometric, geometric sphere there, uh, and now our new particles are going to be these ticks. Because we haven't changed a lot in our spawn yet, uh, they're just kind of going everywhere as soon as the particle is spawned. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and change that to geometry as well so we can start to see that they are all spheres. Back up to my spawn here. Uh, I've got a step size of 2, which means every time that uh, the original particle travels 0.2 units uh, downward or wherever it's going, it's going to generate one new offspring, one new particle. Uh, we can go with maybe one, let's leave it at one for right now, we can always come back and change that. Uh, but we want to come down to their inherited speed here, because they're, right now they're, they're keeping in line pretty much with the original. If I reduce that to zero, they get dropped directly behind in a line. And there's our entire raindrop, almost creating that line by itself. Uh, with a variation, we don't need uh, a variation, and we don't need much of a divergence. If you want to give your raindrops a little character, maybe three to five, uh, you know, you can even inherit maybe one speed. I don't think we need anything. I think I'm just going to zero all of those out for right now. Uh, at this point, I can actually test how many particles I actually will need for this. Uh, and I'll probably come back. I'm going to leave it at 0 0.2 for right now because I know that when I do some scaling on these things, uh, you know, the size is going to get smaller, therefore the space between them. And in the end, I'm going to coat this in a metaball material called blob mesh uh, to get one solid looking droplet. All right, the scale factor, 100, we can do that. We're going to use a, a scale operator to actually define what our tails look like. Right now we've got the original particle and a whole bunch more ending after the age of one or two uh, at the end here. It's giving us our nice lengthy looking drop. To finish carving out the shape of our tails, I'm going to find a scale operator down here. I'm going to click, drag, and drop it above our delete. And the scale operator is going to say only the spawned particles for our tails are going to get this uh, extra bit of information. With the scale, uh, we have some options. The first one is to override it once and change the size based on the x, y, z axis. Uh, another one would be to inherit first, and then uh, we can change it absolutely by time. We can animate some of these values. Uh, the one I want to choose for this is relative successive, meaning every frame of animation that happens it's going to scale the new particles uh, either down or up based on what I said here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and let's do something a little extreme. I want to reduce the size. You can see if I just kind of click and drag down, maybe 
I get some uh, some extra information here, and that way we can start to curve maybe 65. Uh, and I might have to just kind of scoot back and forth to see that drop uh, kind of curve down there a little bit more. Maybe 60, 50. Uh, really, just kind of decide how quickly you want your drops to scale to a point. Maybe back to 60. And now our raindrops are starting to get uh, thinner at the bottom and thicker at the, at the base there. Uh, and that'll be pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and uh, we can leave this on. Yeah, let's just leave it on for right now so we can see that our original particles of that light blue, our new particles for the tails are yellow, and that gives us a good idea of what these each events are doing. We've still got this node here sticking out from the other side, so we need to create a brand new uh, event for once they've bounced, once they've hit this uh, or this deflector, they got to do something else. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and since I still want them to obey gravity, I'm going to use the original force we had. If I hold down shift, you'll see that little plus sign show up next to my mouse cursor. And then I can click and drag it and then drop it to copy that force. Uh, since I want it to be the exact same thing and uh, sometimes you don't want to come back and change every single gravity throughout your whole system, we can mark that as an instance and say OK. Now any changes I make to this gravity over here will also happen here uh, and vice versa. And I can immediately uh, connect that node to that one. So immediately they're going to strike the bottom and uh, change. Right Now we've got tick marks because this new event has tick marks. Uh, I'm going to rename this one. If I select that title bar, rename it, I'm going to call it First Splash. And maybe we can go ahead and leave ticks. Let's change that to something a little bit more noticeable for right now. We're going to get rid of all these displays in the future. Uh, but for right now, I just want you to see what each individual event is actually doing. Uh, we're going to go ahead and have uh, a speed by surface next underneath this. Because they're hitting and then immediately falling down and going off into the middle of nowhere. I want them to kind of shoot up and out. Uh, the sphere is already kind of a perfect shape for this. So if we use the surface of the sphere uh, to shape our speed and direction these particles kind of travel, uh, that might work out pretty well for us. So I'm going to go with by list and add the sphere to our surface geometry. Uh, what's going to happen then is it's going to use that sphere to direct these new particles in a different direction. My big problem right now is the fact that I've got it at 300 speed, which is why we've got particles clear the heck out here and going off in all directions. I want to reduce that quite a bit, maybe 8. Uh, we can give them a 20% variation just so that they do a little bit different. Which means every time they strike one of these things, they're going to go off in uh, kind of a different direction a little bit. Uh, the direction surface normal is fine. Uh, the divergence, again, is how far off. Right now we've got straight lines, so if I just increase this, we'll start to see them scatter. I'm going to go wild. I'm going to do 180 degrees so that they can go in all directions all the way around, basically. Okay, I think that's uh, good to start. Uh, upon the first collision, splashes tend to bounce once or twice, a couple of times. So your computer might be slowing down at this point. Uh, just be careful, uh, scrubbing back and forth, depending on how good your machine is, etc. Uh, let's come back into this event and let's say that if it hit, if it strikes the deflector for the sphere, or if it strikes the deflector for the ground, we want something different to happen. First being is that sometimes when it when a raindrop strikes a surface, uh, we might get some of those dripping down or running drops uh, down the side. So let's do that next. Uh, we'll define that one by doing a collision test. And if they collide, all of those droplets that uh, create our new splashes, if they collide with our U deflector, which is the one that's got the sphere assigned to it, we can send them off in one direction to do something completely different. Uh, and then we can send the ones that may uh, collide with the ground into another direction that's not going to be dripping because you don't have drips running down uh, parallel to the ground. So only things that still have a surface that might be pulled down.
we'll get this. We can go ahead and add that next collision uh, as well. Let's go ahead and add another collision. Let's do a collision spawn for this next one. Underneath it. Now I'm going to click here and drag that little node to the other side just to separate these things going in two different directions. At this point, the original with the U deflector, you can actually rename it and we can call it Sphere Collision. Or this one we can rename to, uh, we can just put Ground Collision in front of it so that we don't get uh, any more confused than we absolutely have to. If it collides with the sphere, we're going to send it off into this other direction, uh, which is going to be a decision maker. Uh, are you going to drip down the side? Or are you just going to splash and continue on your way? Because, let's face it, a raindrop striking the surface could splash right off or could develop a drip. We also don't want there to be so many dripping, running raindrops that this looks like it is uh, sweating while it's in the rain as well. So we're going to kind of uh, define that a little bit differently. We're going to use a split amount to do this. Click and drag a split amount up here. We can actually rename this. We can call it our... Uh, dripping decision and the split amount itself let's go with only 10 percent of the particles are going to drip and then the rest of them are going to uh, just splash and continue on their way uh, the first one will send this off into a new event that will define our dripping uh, the rest of them all the other 90 percent that don't get separated out by the split amount we're going to send right back into the first splash collision. and We'll get kind of a, a loop there that'll keep determining whether or not we should get uh, new splashes or new drips. To do that we're going to use a send out. Split them out, I'll move the little dongle to the other side just to keep them separated. The send out we can leave at all because it's everything that didn't get caught by this one. This one will send them this way, this one We'll send them the other way. In fact, we're going to send it right back to that original. See, we're getting a little bit complicated here, but it'll work out for the best. These are all the ones that are going to continue to splash. These are the ones that are going to drip down the side of the sphere. We can continue making that uh, drip decision. Uh, I think we'll come back and make the dripping momentarily. Let's kind of continue off here of our ground collision. A ground collision Right now, it strikes the surface and splashes and then falls into Never Never Land. We want to make, let's say, a secondary splash. So it splash at least a couple of times before, uh, before anything happens. We'll send this one out into something like that. Again, I want my gravity in this one, so I'm going to hold down Shift and instance that gravity over one more time. This event I might rename and call my second splash. And then we can go ahead and connect those. For the second splash, uh, I'm going to want another speed by surface. Let's go ahead and add a different speed by surface. We don't want to copy that one because I want to use a different uh, something or other. Uh, and you know, in fact, I might I might use a shape that that is a lot like the ground. Uh, I'm going to come over to my Create tab, back to my Geometry button, and my standard my standard primitives here. I'm going to just create a plane for my ground because that'll work nicely. Uh, this plane. We'll go ahead and we'll make it 250 over 250. We don't need uh, anything more than one segment. And then with my Move tool selected, I'll come down and right-click on these little spinners to create our ground. It's pink. Let's just change the default color to something more like gray. Uh, for now, we'll give it a texture later like concrete or tile or something like that. We're going to use this to tell our speed by surface to send our particles out or up away from these polygons. The surface normals show that this pointing straight up, so that's what we want our, our uh, secondary splash to do. Uh, we're going to go ahead and by list, add in our new plane. Set speed once is fine, we don't need 300. Again, we'll uh, reduce that a little bit more, maybe by about 15. Uh, and then a variation of 20 just to give it some uh, class. We want it to go in the direction of the surface normals. That's the side of the face that you can see, which is pointing straight up. And maybe I'll give it a 45% diversion, which means it can go anywhere from straight up to 45 degrees in all directions. 
if we see what's going on here, this one should turn into the original. And we still need another collision uh, in order to get them truly working. Because right now they're falling through the whole thing. So we need something for them to bounce off of the secondary time, or this won't work. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add our regular collisions test. And we are going to add the uh, regular deflector in this one. Uh, the sphere deflector for this, the regular deflector for the ground collision. We can actually tell this one to go ahead and collide more than once, uh, maybe twice, uh, as well as to go ahead and bounce. Still getting some of those drops falling through. Uh, we'll work on, uh, we got to send some of these to uh, finally get rid of and delete uh, in the end. We'll call this a global delete as a matter of fact. So once they've splashed uh, the first time, the second, and since this one's set for two, we'll get three total splashes before it goes and moves on. Uh, and we'll take that. We'll go ahead and make a new delete up here. I'm going to rename that. Uh, we'll call this a global global delete because it's just going to delete everything after it gets through the secondary splash event it's just going to kill the particles so we don't end up with particles falling millions of miles into nowhere below the ground we'll just go ahead and connect that guy okay now we can come back down in here uh, we're not seeing it yet we will I promise uh, but we'll go ahead and uh, continue on and then come back once we get this because this will all be intertwined and contained by the time we're done. Uh, these new drops, as they splash out, we might want them to look a little bit similar to these drops with that tail. Uh, we've already built our initial tails here, so we can actually uh, move this back to zero. I'm going to go ahead and make a new spawn. And uh, this spawn will also be a by travel distance. We'll go ahead and match our initial, maybe 0.2. Uh, zero inherited speed. Whoa, not negative, just zero. And, uh, you know, no divergence. We don't need that. And then we'll go ahead and connect it to this guy. It's just going to make the tails similar to the original ones, exactly the same as the original ones, as a matter of fact. So you can see all these lines crossing. This gets a bit confusing, but uh, once you figure out uh, what all these operators do and how you send them into new events, uh, that'll make a lot more sense. It just takes a little time and practice. All right, still not getting quite what we want. So let's kind of move back uh, and continue defining our, our decisions for our drips here. Here's the ones, the 10% are going to drip down the side. So this one will be uh, a little bit fun. For this one, uh, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to give a new force, not copy this one. Let's go drag a new force out here. And we can pull that over into this one. Uh, we'll rename this event uh, dripping uh, or running, running drops maybe. And we will go ahead and add in our gravity. Let's give them a little bit more gravity uh, by just adding a 500 to it. Instead of a 1,000% influence, we'll do 1,500% influence. And that way, this gravity pulls a little harder uh, since it's also got a surface to contend with. We can also, since we want them to run along the surface here, uh, we're going to use another speed by surface. This one will be a little different than the originals. Add that up there. Uh, go ahead and uh, select the by list and add in our sphere since that's what we want to use to control the particles. Rather than just set speed once on this one, we want to control the speed continuously based on the normals of our surface of our sphere. We don't want them to go so fast, maybe, I don't know, 12 to 15, uh, maybe a variation of 8. Uh, we'll do fine. Again, play with those values until you're happy with them. That's all that uh, there is to it. We also don't want them to speed away from our sphere based on surface normals, but we want them to run parallel to the surface. Uh, if we can find a couple of these guys in here, maybe, we'll start to see 
Uh, there we are. Here's our green. Let's change that to something a little bit more visible, something along the lines of we'll do neon green so we can see those things. We can change the sphere color to uh, a gray as well. That'll make them a little bit more visible. So we get some of these particles, 10% of them in fact, running down the side, sticking to the surface of our sphere almost. Good deal. Uh, once we've done that, uh, we, we can go ahead and uh, tell them to do a couple of things. One, by the time they reach the bottom of the sphere, you might notice that they're getting to the bottom and they are just continuing to travel back up the sphere. That's a big no-no. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is uh, a couple little tricks. One, we're going to define how long they last. Uh, in order to do that, uh, we can give them an age test. Age test, we can say uh, once the particles are about 40 uh, 40 frames old, my email there, sorry, uh, give or take maybe 10, we'll have them move into another uh, another event that'll be uh, kind of a, a let go event for the raindrops to travel. Once they reach a certain age, they'll let go and fall. I'll move this little node to this side in order to get that one done. Uh, this one we can do a gravity as well. Uh, we can do the same gravity. We want that uh, same force for all falling raindrops. So I'm just going to hold shift, copy my original force gravity down to here, make it an instance. And we'll go ahead and say, okay, after 40, 40 frames of life, give or take 10, let gravity do its work again. Which will, some of those, turn into this now light blue color. Let's turn them into circles so that we can see that a little bit better. And then they will fall away and drip right off. Good. Uh, they kind of fall through the surface a couple of places there I noticed, so we can, we can give them a little help. Uh, let's add another speed by surface to this. We might even rename this event to uh, uh, I don't know, the, the let go let go of sphere event or something. The, the, drop free or drop loose or something along those lines. And this speed by surface we're going to utilize that sphere shape again. We'll kind of keep that uh, set speed once and we'll just give them a, a real small push, maybe five, uh, with a variation of the same. Uh, divergence of maybe, I don't know, 25. Surface normals is all fine, but what that'll do is it'll get these guys to drip down the side there, and then when they do let go, they'll hop just a little bit off the surface. And maybe that'll help us avoid uh, some of those other uh, collisions. To do even more, uh, raindrops running down the side kind of tend to collect water as they go so that when they drip free maybe we have them drip free without with not just one drop but but lots of drops uh, so we can add maybe a spawn put that all the way back to zero again before I do that we'll add a spawn uh, this spawn can be a spawn one time uh, but we'll do something crazy like 20 particles uh, 20 offsprings it'll, it'll spawn uh, we'll give them I don't know maybe a, a negative 20 inherited speed so they actually really kind of slow down from their originators uh, we'll make them do all kinds of, you know, with a, with a huge variation, they might do uh, even weirder stuff. And maybe, you know, 30% divergence uh, so that these guys, maybe 25% uh, difference. So that some of them will have 20, some of them will have 10, some of them will have something along those lines. And then as they jump off now, we'll get lots of circles falling instead of just one drop. Makes it even wetter. Uh, likewise, we can go ahead and add a collision spawn underneath this. We'll move that node to the other side just to separate these two. And uh, this one we will say, uh, after so, if it collides with our deflector, our ground again, uh, we can have it kind of loop back up and rejoin our secondary splash event. 
So once they hit the sphere, they'll drip off, then they'll hit the ground again, and then finally come back to that second splash that the ones that just hit the ground already get to do, and eventually feeding back through uh, into our delete. This should kind of close a loop, I'm hoping. And now we're starting to see some green splashes. Uh, we still got a little work to do somewhere in there because we've got lots of stuff falling below. We'll just see what's causing that here in a moment. But there's some of those cool green splashes that we're getting uh, from that event. I know why we're getting all these. The original first splash, I added the ground collision spawn, but I forgot to tell it which deflector to use. Let's put it back to zero here, hit the buy list, and add our ground deflector into there. Then we should see a lot more green splashes. There we go. That's what I want to see. And none that are falling below that. It's all a self-contained, we've got this kind of a mess of particle flow flowchart windows, but uh, we are starting to do some, some pretty good things here. Uh, one more, two more, a couple of things here. Uh, now that we've got the whole system kind of contained, we can come back to our running drops. Uh, we've got these drops. These are the circles that are, uh, are the, the green ones that are appearing, the green tick marks. Let's change those so we can see them a little bit better. Uh, to, I don't know, we'll just do diamonds. Uh, and they're running down the side, but we're not getting any of those cool streaks or, or tails on these guys. Uh, so let's create some. Over here we've done an age test which sends them out and say after a while they're going to let go. Uh, we might still see a particle now and then that's making it all the way to the bottom and then it starts crawling up the top. We can give kind of a redundancy thing. If I go to my create tab, over to my forces button, my space warps button, and get another, we'll just do an S deflector here for this one. Now I'm going to create, minimize that real quick, I'm going to create an S deflector maybe that big and shove it up in here maybe to the bottom of the sphere which means that when these particles strike this we can also tell them to let go so that any particle that's a little bit too rambunctious and gets all the way to the bottom won't start traveling back up the other side but instead once it hits this it's gonna fall no matter what uh, kind of redefining the bottom of our sphere there with this we're going to need a collision put it up here and we're going to add the U deflector, oh, the, the new S deflector there to this one. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and just connect it to the let go of sphere. So this one goes out to this as well as this one. That gives us double protection. If it hits this deflector, it'll let go of the sphere and drop off. If it also reaches the age of 40, give or take 10, it'll let go and drop off. Uh, the other thing we want to do is to make uh, our uh, our sphere kind of, uh, or any of those drops that are striking and running down the side here, we want to send them off to create kind of a, a stretching behind it tail, uh, much like our original raindrops. So I'm going to move this back to zero real quick, zoom in a little bit more on our running drops, and I'm going to add another spawn, put it at the bottom this time here. This spawn will be a by travel distance. Uh, we'll say they're going to be moving a little bit because they've got uh, the sphere to contend with and some of the, something like that. So maybe we'll go with a 0.5 step size, uh, not quite as small as our last one. 100% uh, of them are spawnable, that's fine. One offspring's fine. And uh, we'll go with, again, a zero inherited speed so that they line up behind it. And uh, no divergence here. This spawn is going to need another new event to come out here. Uh, we'll, we'll put a new delete up here. Uh, we'll rename this event uh, Tales, Tales of Running Drops. And we'll go ahead and connect those two. Right now the delete set to all. We don't want that. We want to give them a certain amount of time to grow tails and then end. Uh, maybe 25 frames. Uh, give or take, I don't know, five frames. Then you'll start to see that not only do these little green diamonds uh, leave a trail in their wake, uh, but also 
uh, we get that those streaks and they'll still behave and fall off eventually and that's given us that final uh, good look that we want. We can do another scale, uh, a relative successive scale here so that they come to a point in the back. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to add a new scale to above that delete. We'll set it to relative successive just like we did over here. And uh, we'll say maybe these ones are moving a little quicker so we'll go reduce their size to 90 percent uh, of the original minus 10 percent every frame that they do travel uh, and that should if I go ahead and actually make this set it to geometry we can t set the, the green diamonds to also geometry we'll be able to see that a little bit better and these are now our original drops kinda switch into a tail we can play with that value oops we don't want to make them get bigger uh, but let's say 90, 95, 85, just until those, I think actually 90 was pretty good. We'll just leave it there. All right. And there we have an entire self-contained uh, flow chart for our particle flow rain. Uh, everything's named in its proper place. The only thing left to do is kind of clean some of this stuff up. Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to kind of come up to get my magnifying glass and zoom in here a little bit. The original display that we've got, I'm going to change it to, let's do something like lines, and I'm going to move it up to the original particle flow source. Then I'm going to select one of all these other GR, all these other displays that we've got going, they automatically get created. Uh, I'm going to hold control, select all of these guys. Whoops. Not the uh, arrow. If, if you accidentally select something like that, go ahead and hit Alt and unselect it. Then go back to control and continue selecting all the displays for the rest of this thing. Then we can right click and just delete them all. Which is going to kind of clean up our rain system to all light blue lines. Another thing we can do uh, is of course cache it uh, so that uh, our computers don't struggle with all of this particle stuff going on uh, in the end. Uh, we've got a couple of caches now. We used to only have one, but now we've got, uh, I like this cache disk. We'll put it up here, uh, maybe above the, the whole thing. Uh, we can say viewport and renderer. Uh, we'll select a file for it to go, uh, and I'll, I'll make a new, let's see if I've got my, uh, Here's a rain folder. We'll call this uh, rain. We'll call it a new particle cache for our rain. And we'll give it a, a name. I must have run one that was called heart recently. Uh, we'll call it raindrops. Uh, just to be on the safe side, you come down here to the memory, add a bunch of zeros until it, it maximizes. Uh, then all we have to do is hit the update all button, and it will go through and record the animation, the simulation of all these particles into a single file that then all it has to do is play back rather than think about every single frame uh, how it's going to display these. That usually takes uh, a moment, uh, looks like about a minute uh, of our time. We'll just let it finish, no big deal. Uh, and then your rain particle system is complete. All that's left to do is add some things to your scene, texture, light it, uh, and then add a blob mesh to your particles. Blob mesh is a little slow uh, and sadly with a with a with a rain system this complex uh, blob mesh may crash your computer it might slow it down uh, exponentially. Uh, I, I like to use uh, a couple of plugins uh, Thinkbox has one called Frost as well as XMesh which then you can you can record uh, all the animation for your metaball material uh, and then just play it back at the same way that this is caching right now. Uh, but we won't get into all of that uh, today. Uh, we'll just call this rain system finished. And uh, you guys can play with uh, decorating your raindrops, adding a blob mesh and, and whatnot uh, on your own. Remember to save your work before you start playing around with uh, the blob mesh uh, because you will probably crash it at some point. It's about done. Good deal. Once it is done, our rain plays quickly and simply and easily uh, now for the whole time. And we can start to see our rain 
splashing and dripping and dropping and we've got a pretty nice uh, kind of cartoony rain system here. Uh, again your blob mesh just in case you do want to play with that create geometry compound objects uh, and here's your blob. I'm going to go ahead and save my file real quick before I do this. We'll create a blob mesh there. Uh, immediately go to your modify tab because changing settings in the original blob mesh on that create tab won't work. And we can say maybe our render will go small. Uh, the viewport, oof, 1.5 to be on the safe side. I like to put the large data optimization and then you can add the PF source to your blob mesh. Uh, which will give your raindrops an actual material. The smaller that is in the render, it'll look a little bit uh, a little bit better, I'm sure. Uh, if we go ahead and let's uh, sign a renderer there, uh, tell it to render that front view. And there's the green of our raindrops. Uh, we don't want just another thing real quickly before I let you go. Uh, we don't want our particles to actually show up in the in the final render. We don't want all those spheres, uh, spheres and lines and stuff that we had in our particle flow source, our 20-sided spheres to show up. So all we have to do is click that uh, little teapot icon next to the render operator to make sure that they don't show up in our final render, that the only thing that does show up uh, is our droplets. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and and unselect that uh, lock from my perspective and I'm going to try and rem render the single drop we've got up here. All you got to do is texture that blob mesh with a uh, water texture and you should be pretty good to go. And that'll splash and, and be liquid uh, all over the place. Uh, again, be careful with blob mesh. It does run a little slow. Uh, things like uh, frost will work a little bit better. Alright, that's all there is to it.